as human beings, we possess reason, logic, and empirical evidence. We all agree? How do we use this to answer these questions? Of, you know, where we came from, what's our purpose here, and where are we going? We don't have anything else. As human beings, we don't have anything else other than this. That's the human quality. So, Allah Ta'ala in His infinite mercy, okay, has sent the Quran. Why? Why? Because this is what we have been discussing. We have shown over and over again the limitation of these three qualities. So how is it that we will accept the Quran as the word of If religion and you know, uh, science is the same, it's based on belief, why do we accept one over the other? This was a question asked to me about three days ago. He says, I understand what you said. So you are saying science is belief, religion, specifically Islam. This is Islam now. We are not discussing religion here. Islam is also belief. Why should I believe this over this? Actually, this question was posed by Mehdi to uh, Richard Dawkins. He said, this is more rational. Okay. So, so, first of all, before I answer this question, we understand the choice is ours. This is here is science is more rational. I am making the case Islam is more rational. Why and how? So, let's examine this. Thing. When you are using reason, logic and empiricism, Okay, you are using it in this framework. One of the most important, I'm going to pick one, just one of these things here I've written. There are more. Haya. What is Haya? Rasulullah is part of Imam. Is it is part integral part of Imam? So I will give you three examples from the Muslim history where this, this, this is used in conjunction to this to prove something. And what that means. I'll show you. Just hear me out here. Khadija Radhawana, when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam first saw Jibril Alayhi Salam, okay, and he said, you know, he was afraid. Jibril Alayhi Salam has come. He came home. Khadija Radhawana comforts him. He says, do you see the person? He says, I see the person. So what is the scientific method? Observation, hypothesis, test, and confirmation. Right? You, everybody thinks this is just the domain of science. We have discussed this elsewhere. This is not the domain of science. Everybody does this. Implicitly or explicitly. Well, so what does Khadija Radhawana see? Observation is Jibril al Islam is around. And he's afraid. He reports this thing to his wife. Now, this observation needs to be test tested. To, is it good or is it bad? What is this? So she forms a hypothesis. And what is the hypothesis? Look at it. She goes to his right hand side. Says, do you see him? He says, yes. Comes to the left. Do you see him? He says, yes. She hugs him. Removes the hair, uh, you know, covering and hugs him. He said, do you see him? He says, no. He says, this is from Allah. Why? Because the angel has haya. Has haya. If it was not from Rabbul Alameen, this will not be there. This is under which this is working. So the hypothesis has been tested under the presumption of haya. Okay, and once it is tested, it is confirmed, right? So, a Muslim uses this, he is using it, but he is in this framework. When, when you go outside Islam, especially in the secular system, you are going to use this with randomness, chance, luck, fate, destiny, coincidence. Am I wrong? Kios. You can add Kios also here. 
Accident. To explain why did this happen, it's a random move. Well, it happened. The framework, the presupp presupposition here is this. The presupposition here is this. What does Allah tell us begin with? Alif, Azubillah bin Shaitan, Alif, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. Alif, Lamim, Zalik, Al Kitab, Al Raiba, Fi Hudan, Lil Muttaqi. Presupposition. If you don't have taqwa, if you don't believe in Allah, you believe in randomness. You, you accept that as your presumption. How are you going? You are going to apply this in this framework. Okay. Second example. I sent this email out to everyone. I hope everybody read it. Unknown sahabas. Uh, sorry, little known sahabas. So one of the little known sahabas is Julebi. Okay. 